away my sin. And that's what John knows, and he knows it well. He has read Isaiah 53. He has read Leviticus. He's a prophet. Prophets are saturated with the Word of God. It's happening right then. It's happening. The parable is coming true. The pointer and its reality is emerging. And I'm a root down in Leviticus and down in Isaiah, but I'm bulging out here and say, there it is. There's the Lamb of God. And I'm willing to become nothing if people would turn to him. Peter didn't write a gospel, though he probably is behind um, Mark as the main testimony. But he did write an epistle. And he did talk about the Lamb of God. And he did relate it to our sins. Let me read his testimony. This is 1 Peter 1.18. You were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. So there it is. The reason John in his epistle said he came to take away sin and he is without sin is because that's what lambs have to be. Without blemish, without spot. So you and I don't qualify. We need a lamb. We can't be the lamb. Every one of you needs a substitute. And no animal will do, and no sinful human will do. No sinner can take away the sin of a sinner. How is it that Jesus was without sin? Everybody born normally is sinful. Everybody's born with sin. It says so in Romans 5, 12. Just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all have sinned. So how comes it? that when the Word became flesh, he didn't become sin. Is he not a man? And the answer is, Jesus was not born like you and I. He didn't have an earthly father. God ordained that the God-man would be the God-man and therefore would be born of Mary by God, not Joseph. So I'll read it to you. This is Luke 1.30. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? 
And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. He was holy like nobody is holy and stayed holy all his life. And today is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, Lamb and Lord of all. That's how he could do it. That's how he was spotless. He was God, the God-man without sin. In the beginning was the Word, And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, and everything about Him suited Him to become the Lamb of God. So what does it mean? What does it mean, behold the Lamb of God, who now is suited, as only He can be, to take away the sin of the world. What does that mean? That the Lamb takes away the sin of the world. What does it mean? It means two things for the Jews. Two amazing things. Both of which are profoundly relevant for us Gentiles too. Number one, the first thing it means is that the God-man would die. That's what lambs are for, either eating or sacrificing. Nobody was thinking pets. Lambs are for being slaughtered. I use the word slaughtered not for effect. But for this reason, only John in all the New Testament uses the Greek word svadzo, which is what you do to an animal to kill it. You slaughter them. It's found in Revelation especially. Behold the lamb who was slaughtered. It's usually translated slain, softening it up a little bit. He became a lamb so that he could be slaughtered. That's the first thing it means. To be the lamb of God and to take away the sin of the world, he had to be slaughtered. Meaning number one of John's testimony is the son of God took on human form so that he could be slaughtered. That's number one. Number two, it meant that the whole world would benefit from this and not just Jews, though he was the Jewish Messiah. Had been prepared for in a tiny little part of the world by a tiny little people called Israel and was their Messiah. And John says, John the last of the great Old Testament prophets, behold the Lamb of God who takes away, and then perhaps to shock every narrow-minded Jewish person, the sin of the world. That's the second thing it means. He was called the Lamb of God because he would die, and he would die so that the world would have its sin taken away. Now, we need clarity on this. We need more. I think the best way to get it is to go to that piece of the Gospel of John where those two realities, he would die and he would die for the world, come together. It's chapter 11. I invite you to go there with me. 